for marketing, use some of the Desiree's oh, information about joint ventures. Who else has your pawns that you're trying to access? Great exercise, okay? How about we take one more question and then we'll, we'll mingle and you can ask. Is that good? Yeah. Um, uh, in an idea stage around education, is I'm toying off with the idea of structuring it as a public benefit organization. That's that something, how do investors look at that? Okay. I, have, I, have, I don't know. One, one thing that investors don't often tell you, and I'll tell you, is that you can have a for-profit and non-profit entity together, so therefore you get so many benefits having a non-profit as well as a for-profit business. So I don't know your model, I'll certainly you know, talk to you about that, and then figure out like, well, is that something that is feasible for you? Because uh, there are so many grants and so many opportunities when it comes to that, because the government really does encourage us to, to give back and to uh, do some of the jobs that, you know, that is laid upon them. You know, you know, the whole thing about politics. Why not us funding ourselves? Why not giving back? And that's another thing that investors don't often say. Please try to do something charitable. Whether it's like 5% of proceeds on one sale for one day and advertising. It's so important because the law of money is, is circular and continuous. It's continuum. What you give, and you've heard this, you will get back. So please think about you know, something that you're near and dear, is near and dear to your heart. And, and do something charitable to give back to others because then it's just going to, you know, the law of relativity, the law of money, and the law of karma really tells us that it's important as a human being to do that. You have one more? Sorry. One more question? Or do we, do we, yeah. one more, and then one the last. Then we can drink and have fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I've heard, uh, I've heard from like a, you know, someone that went to school for a pitch decks. And uh, one question that I did ask, um, you know, like when formulating the deck um, and you know assigning roles um, as far as the team. Uh, for instance, like if you're the brains, keep, you know, behind say the, the product and the you know the idea and the business, um, do you designate yourself CEO uh, when you're more of a CTO title? Um, and it's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, let's see. Do you have a team other than yourself? Um, I'm building a team. Okay. Okay. Well, if investors don't see a certain person fit for a CEO role, we will tell you. And our, our checks are going to be contingent upon it. Remember, guys, don't ever take anything personally because it gets pretty brutal. And I, I really try not to be brutal with people because I don't believe in that. It's, it's not about that. It's about the reality of making this business successful. That's what it's about. So, oftentimes we've had to move CEOs over into another uh, C-level executive position simply because they were not the voice and the uh, front man or woman for that company. So, therefore, too, when we're talking about being coachable, sometimes you know we see you as the artist or we see you as the technology person, um, and and you. It's, it's, it's a delicate dance, as I've seen many companies hold, because the CEO refused to give up his or her position because they thought, it's my idea, it's my company. Well, no, you know what? Think of the long term. You're going to get just as large of a check, if not larger, because you created this company. So you just you know, can't think of in a box and just like a, a vertical. Flexible. Be flexible about it. Yes, we will tell you. Personally. We will absolutely tell you where you belong. Yes, we will. And you can take that advice or not. And you know, there's there's a moment. Um, my background is not in business. My background is I was originally a painting major, I have a bachelor of fine arts and jewelry design. That was the thing. I mean we can do a lot of things, right? It's great. But I've always thought three-dimensionally and it's easy for me to think process when it comes to products. And I've been public speaking since I was in like sixth grade. You know, that's just part of who I am. But I remember that moment of stepping into that title of CEO, because I came out of a corporate background a long time ago, and that was a title that somebody hired you for. You know what I mean? Like it was that, that moment right. where they bestowed you, like, oh, you're you got good enough and to have the CEO mantle. <laughs> and I remember um, saying, well, somebody needs to be CEO.
CEO of this company, and it was fledgling at the moment, you know, years ago. And I was like, somebody needs to be CEO. And I kind of looked around, and I said, well, I guess it's me. Uh -huh. um, but I haven't stayed attached to being a matter of fact, I've been in a conversation recently about removing myself as CEO. Like, is that who I want to be three years from now? In the, the because the company is growing massively, do I want to be that in three years? And literally last night, I was in that gut check moment because I have a meeting on Monday about this with my team to see if maybe we're going to bring in our, our own CEO separate from me. I know a lot of CEOs who want to step down. Um, it's tough because she, well, one particularly is an artist. And she is the creator of what's called Nut Burgers, Nut Tacos. It's a, you know, no soy, no meat. It's supposed to be phenomenal. I have them in my freezer. I got to try them. I've heard them. They're fabulous. <laughs> um, and, she, you know, she is like, hey, I don't want the, the daily hangups of, of the financials and all this. I, I'm the creator of these products. And she has a, a nice line of skews, actually, in sprouts and whole foods. So some people know where they belong. Uh, some people might need a little help on, on shifting over. I think it goes back to being flexible and taking the advice and not being so stuck or whatever it is. If you are really going through the heart, if you really want this product to come to the world and share it, then do whatever it takes to do that. If it means bringing in someone else that's more qualified in any position, you know, besides destroying your net gut idea, then do so. Especially because it doesn't have to be forever. You can get this around and get this to this point, and then you can always say, okay, now I really want to be doing this again and be able to do it. But just get, just get your, it does you no good to have this idea this inside of you. So you get it out to the world and get the money out to the world, that way they would be able to take whatever you want after that. You're only doing it for five to eight years. That's what we like to see in exit. At least five, 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 five. Um, and, and usually it's seven or eight, we like to see five. So just keep that in mind when you're building your company, when you're building your business model, you're building your exit plan. For me, exit plan is huge. Once again, exit starts on day one. You've got to already start meeting your requires right now, right now. Somebody, if you want to meet somebody at Google, you know through se you know, seven degrees of separation there's somebody you know at Google, so go find them and meet them. And so, it's, it's also really possible when you're pitching to be the CEO at this stage of the business and you know that as you hit certain metrics, you're going to need to change. You know, for me, I, I went back literally in the past couple of days and I revisited the job description of CEO. And I went, okay, it's like a reality check. I, just, I Googled what other people are doing as CEOs. And I went, okay, wait a sec, here's, here's where I have gaps. Not in, Yes, there was one in my personal knowledge, but it wasn't so much knowledge as setting aside the time to do our next round of strategic plan. So I literally enrolled myself uh, yesterday in the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Businesses Program so that I have something on the calendar to create that strategic plan. It's not that I don't want to be CEO, it's that, wait a minute, there's a, a realignment. I actually really like being CEO. I like being the face of a company. I like doing this, and, and we're growing, so I guess there's a certain aptitude for it. And, and it's about getting the right support in place. Just because you're the CEO doesn't mean you're doing the CFO job, you know? You have to understand the financials, not be the one delivering the financials to your desk. Right, right. If you don't have enough money for some uh, financial, uh, like a CFO type or a CTO type, uh, get five or three to five excellent, excellent advisors. And then all the advisory board is different than a board of directors. As you probably know, board of directors receive equity. Uh, they're a stakeholder in your company. You answer to them as well, and they have voting rights. When it comes to advisors, it's for free. It's just because we love you. And so therefore, but make sure you get the best of the best. Why not? So the areas that you're a little lean on, you don't have enough money to pay someone for savings, is another way of saying, hey, be my advisor. And be very specific, I need you you know, 10 hours a month uh, to rely on, and, and they'll say yes or no, and get big name brands as best you can, because, you know, in this world, you know, we're so jaded in LA and California and San Francisco, oh, Google, Amazon, we work for that, oh, that's gonna be great. Well, back in the day, we'd be like, wow, you work for Amazon? Now we're like, oh, it's great, you work for Amazon, okay. It says something about you. You are who your company, you are the company you keep. So why not, you know, Get that confidence level up and go after those people you 
really want to help fill out your team as interim. That's key. Another thing too is that some of them may be a response about this. Some of you may have some traction behind, like two, three, five years behind you. Many times you get to your flat line. You know, somebody's been working and to a certain point and then you flat line and just can't get it to that next level. Because your income, your revenue goes in different multiple of revenue, like a half a million to a million, and if you can't move it past, that's the time to reconsider as well. That's the time to say, hey, maybe I take it my company as far as I can personally, I need to bring in more expertise to take it to the next level. And that can be part of your ask in your for your uh, budget, for your venture capital. You're going to say, hey, if this is where I'm at, I need to hire a CFO or CEO or a tech person because now we want to grow and I have taken it to as far as I can go. So any point in your business, you have to have that reality check and be open to that change just for the sake of getting into where you're going to be. We've seen a lot of pitches that have a line item in the use of funds that is CTO, meaning like they're going, okay, we know that to hit this next thing, to make the best use of your money and give you the biggest bump in valuation that we can, we need these key players that we haven't been able to afford. You know, CTO, CFO, CEO are absolute must when I invest. They don't have to all be, the CEO of course is full time. The CFO and the CTO don't have to be full time. They can be part time, interim, however you set it up. However, I need to see those people in place for sure. There is no doubt about it. Those, those are key. The key C-suites are right there. And I've, I've seen it where... Sure you can. You can use your advisors as CFO, interim CFO, interim CTO, and not pay them. And I've seen it where we've already identified the person that you know is going to fill that slot. They're on our board of advisors. We, you know, yes. and so there's a loop. A lot of times, board of advisor turns to board of directors, Could or it turns easy. to somebody who's actively working in the business. It's really common. When you flatline and you feel like I'm not growing, talk. Have a nice team party. Take them out. Get them wherever you need to get them. Happy. Happy. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> <laughs> Just an hour. Listen. Listen to your team and also your advisors. Listen to them, and all of a sudden you're going to get this amazing motivation because you know sometimes the team is a little more low key and they don't. Maybe they're really boisterous and loud and give you ideas all the time, or maybe they're a little more reserved. However, if you just sit and listen to them, number one, you, your your real estate will go for them so much because you are an actual listening team member, not just the CEO. And your advisors are just a, a whirlwind of advice for you. Free advice? Why not? Take it. Our night is a big night for us. Yeah, yes, tonight too. And we are in online magazine. You are very, very kind. Yes. And we are we're gonna stop talking. So <laughs> everybody, our night is happening right now. City Hall is one of the big central parks. We're gonna hang for the last